Welcome to chapter seven. In chapter six, we finished with me saying, I'm glad you asked the question of, well, what should I do instead of pretending that my life is such that optimal and realistic are one and the same? And in chapter seven, we're really going to get into the nitty gritty details and we're going to answer one of the most common questions I get related to adherence. What do I do if I miss a workout? So that's right. Chapter seven is all about handling missed workouts. We're going to discuss it both from the perspective of a trainee who is not on a specific time course of competing in a certain amount of time and also the competitive athlete because the answers do differ slightly. What happens if I miss a workout? Well, first off, probably not much. Don't worry. It's just one workout. Like I said, I've been training for nearly 20 years. I rarely miss workouts, but when I do, I react in this manner. And I think you'll be surprised by how simple this solution is. Because this is a common problem, but it has a very easy solution. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't like this solution when they're first presented with it. But if you give it a chance, and I think if you get to the end of this chapter, you'll understand where I'm coming from and you'll be more open to it and you'll see the logic and the simplicity behind it. But ultimately, what I recommend if you miss a scheduled training session is just miss it and then pick up completing that missed session on your next scheduled workout. The next week, maybe, perhaps, or the next day. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hey, Eric, I have an upper body session scheduled on Monday and Thursday. So let's say, for example, you've got an upper lower. You train on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and you do your upper bodies on Monday and Thursday. If you were to miss your Saturday lower body session, what I'm suggesting is you would just come in next week on Monday and do lower body. And I know, I know you have an upper body scheduled session on Monday. How could I do a lower body? Well, if you're thinking, I'm not allowed to do that. That's, that's the schedule. I'm not supposed to change my schedule. I don't want to change my program. Well, why not is my question. And if your response is, well, hey, because I'll be behind, then my question to that is, well, behind what? What exactly are you getting behind? Ultimately, is it really a big deal if your eight-week program finishes in 8.3 weeks or 8.5 weeks? No, it really doesn't matter. And it also prevents having to do other things. There's presumably a reason why you chose a four-day-per-week split. Perhaps those are the four days where it's easy for you to train, where you have the time, space, headspace, where it doesn't impinge upon your family's schedules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if by cramming another workout in, you're violating some of the aspects of why you set up your training in this way, is that a good idea? If only you can answer that question, but ultimately, there's really no downside to just continuing on from where you left off on your scheduled workout days. Uh, especially in the example of an upper lower where you're never going to have that overlap issue. Now, this does depend on your split. It does depend, depend on your setup and it won't always work. But many times, especially with body part splits or upper lowers, this is a really simple solution and it really doesn't cost you anything. The lifting police won't arrest you if you do a lower body session what was supposed to be scheduled on an upper body day or if you complete an eight-week program in eight and a half or nine weeks. Really, this is not going to matter in the long run, and it's a very simple way to just carry on and not let a gear that was in your wrenches become any more than that. So consider it. Simple solution, but it doesn't necessarily always work. The next thing we're going to discuss is what do we do if we're an athlete with a competition and we can't necessarily change the schedule.